Despite the fact that neither Andre or I drive, one great thing about in the next couple of weeks is that we're going on a road trip, which will be fun. We're going to be moving to Taupo, which is an exciting new adventure for us all. Okay. Happy, happy kids. There's lots of room for you to lie down. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be really fun going down to Taupo. It's just more friendly. People will say hello to you when you walk down the street. Bye. See you later. Love you. Bye. See you. Feet and paws in. Yes. We're going to stay with some family of mine in Papamoa. After that, we're going down to Lake Tarawera. Then we will finally get settled in Taupo. with the effects and ongoing effects of my brain tumour and to this day it's still there in my head. That's what's caused me to be visually impaired. I was born without all my ribs on my right side. At about 16 years of age I had my spine fused and I now have tremendous back pain and I'll get a headache but I'm happy with that. Like I've learned to not strive for comfort. since when we were just kids. Back then, I didn't really understand the complexity of her condition, let alone mine. It was just her two kids playing and we got along because when we were sick, we just, for health reasons, had to be in sanitised areas. Have we up? Yes. Oh, you come to Lowy? Cool. <laughs> you gonna help Lowy? period where we lost touch for about four years and I actually tracked Andre down, got in touch and we started catching up again and we just became best mates again basically. Come on Dowie. They are so different and possibly that's why they get on so well and Andre was so tolerant of her because she was bossy with him when she was little. She was, she was bossy and he was very cynical, you know. <laughs> Was, they were so sweet. So not a lot's changed. So not a lot's changed, really, no. <laughs> Nothing's really changed. No, it's all the same. Yeah. Bossy as ever. Well, maybe a little. I think um, we're... We have a lot of similarities. We really do. Yeah, we do. We, ha we have a lot of similarities, um, but at the same time, I think we have a lot of differences. Yeah. So. I suppose one of the ways we, we do really differ is that... Um, and this is something that's kind of rubbed off on me, the, the more time we've spent together, um, is he is very sarcastic. He's very sarcastic. I and say no, but I but, it but facetious. Um, and, I don't know, he looks at everything in a very logical way, which sometimes annoys the hell out of me. Um, because, I don't know, I'm... Would we say I'm an optimist? Yes, I'm an optimist. And this guy over here is a realist. And yeah. nah, just... I'm glad you didn't say pessimist, because I'm not. <laughs> I'm very sarky and... Um, um, sometimes, some things. I have, I have my moments things. of sheer brilliance, but... So, like, some, some things we have the same sort I of humour. I I frequently get reminded that I'm not. Mm. Not really. But, but no, we, we do have a similar sense of humour on yeah. some things, but some things, you're just disgusting. <laughs> say that. I would. What, what, what male doesn't make the occasional poo joke? Uh, sure. I think that their friendship 
was born when they were very small and also they've had a lot of shared experiences, shared life experiences that that they've had to live in isolation, they've had to learn to live with pain, they've had to learn to live with being medically fragile. When I was two years old, I was diagnosed with an optic and hypothalamic glioma cancer, which is a type of brain tumour. I underwent neurosurgery and a craniotomy. Not long after that, I underwent 18 months of extensive chemotherapy. And then when I was five, I became very unwell again. And my tumour started to grow again very aggressively. So I had about six months more chemotherapy. Then it was sort of a last ditch effort for me to have radiotherapy. And that's what finally stopped the tumour from regressing any further. I was born in the northern parts of Russia. I was adopted out to my mother here when I was two years, eight months of age. She raised half a million dollars for my first trip to America for that first operation. I had titanium implants. And every six months as I grew, they would need lengthening. At about 16 years of age, one of my titanium pieces actually got infected. They ended up taking them out. Been about 27 operations on my back. It's just life though for me. I don't know anything, anything different. I don't go to hospitals anymore for good reason. I'm quite sick of them. I've very limited vision. I have no depth perception. I've always struggled with things like steps and colour changing. That's why Lowy's made such a, a huge difference. How are you feeling today? Pretty tired today. Yeah. It, it's quite daunting moving to a, a new town and sort of having to start afresh, particularly after getting established with, with Lowy in Auckland. It's a bit different for me. I've moved a lot. But it's hard because there's just a lot of judgment in the world, especially for someone like me. Just walking down the street, you know, you get the stairs, people looking. And that is the norm, but at the same time, it does get to me. You can meet someone for the first time and automatically they've put me lower on their ranking just because of the way I look. <laughs> Like, I, I love it so much when people actually come up and have a conversation. And it's very rare. I've had lots of people say to me, oh, wow, you're, you're actually intelligent. Don't get it, Seagull. Out of the 100 people that have a look, maybe one will come up and say, oh, not, not to be rude, but what happened to you? And I don't mind that. I, I, I prefer that over just glancing and looking and pretending that they're not looking when I know they are. Yeah. I find it hard sometimes because I say, how about we go do this? Or can you come with me to do this? And he says, no, I don't really want to go there. And, and I say, why? And he'll say, because there's going to be lots of people. And sometimes it just sort of slips my mind that it's because, you know, you, you don't like having lots of people watch you because I can't see it. <laughs> Cows or anything? I haven't seen any cows. No. Or sheep. No. Or sheep. No. Or horses. You know, animals in general. No. No. How disappointing. Huh. Everything's so lovely and green here, eh? Yeah. That's pretty funny. What is? You were saying how green and lovely it is? Yeah. And then the cameraman looks over and it's all cut down. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's like, no, never mind. <laughs> I was sort of meaning more in the distance. Yeah. <laughs> that was brilliant. I've said for timing. So, Eilish, when you're driving around, how much can you see around you? It's always been a fairly challenging thing for me, like how much I can actually see when driving in a car. Yeah. Um, particularly when you're on the open road and, um, you know, there's lots of trees and things like that, things sort of uh, almost blend into one a little bit and that's why I end up getting so car sick. Can you pop yeah. a couple out for me? I think that's safer. Don't really want to lose any on the floor of the van. Due to where my brain tumour is, I've always suffered from car sickness. And a lot of that is also just because I can't see. When you're driving along and trees and things like that are rushing past you, it actually makes me feel like I'm, I'm going to be sick because your fight or flight instinct kicks in. Enough? Um, I might have a sip more. Hang on. The reason why our friendship developed into Andre becoming my personal assistant, for want of a better term, was I wanted to learn how to touch type, and Andre said he could teach me how to do that. And then he became my reader-writer for university. It just became uh, more day-to-day -day things. Having Andre to, to help me with, with things has made a, a huge difference. Like lining things up in my scrapbooking, which I used to have to always ask my mum to help me with, and sometimes she'd be busy. <laughs> Little other things like Andre cuts my fingernails for me, because I can't see to cut my fingernails. So like the other day I said, can you, can you cut my fingernails for me? And so. Um, you know, the whole risk of chopping off fingers and things like that. Um, I'm happy to help with whatever. I can't say I'm a good ther uh, beauty therapist, but I try. <laughs> <laughs> and that one across the, the bottom, um, just a little... A little bit of white smooth. Yeah, just a little bit. Lining things up and um, little details become quite difficult for me to see. Some of the cards I, I do, are, they do take a lot more time for me. And it does frustrate me a lot, just how much time I have to put into things in comparison to what a sighted person would have to put into something. But I think in some ways it just means more, because I've, I've had to put a lot more into it to get it to that stage. Most of the cards I make, I give away, but um, I'm hoping, though, when we move to Taupo to expand um, that into selling my cards at the local markets. Do I need to smile? Do I need to look? <laughs> Ever since I was really little, I've always loved telling stories and writing stories. My first book was published last year. Um, it's called Hospital Happenings, and basically it walks a small child through three basic medical procedures that most children will experience at some stage in their childhood, which is a checkup, an x-ray and a blood test. I've also more recently just been volunteering in public speaking roles, doing sort of inspirational speaking. So I've worked on a local level with my charity work. I was on the Auckland branch committee of Canteen for a year. I did a lot of fundraising and planning events and running events. I just go at 100 miles an hour and that's just who I am. I love it. I love doing that. I love being a part of something bigger that I know will um, influence and improve the lives of other people. We're just five minutes away. Good girl, sweetheart. We're almost there. Yeah. We're gonna go on a boat. Yeah, ready for it. Alright. 
No diving. No diving. Yeah, no swimming. Nice and steady. Nice and steady. Kia ora, welcome. I'm David. Hi there. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Kelly, come on, sweetie. She's, I hope she's not too heavy. Here we go. No, she's fine. There you go, sweetie pie. It's all right. There you go. There you go. Can you hop down? There you go. Good girl. Welcome to Lake Tarawera. As I, it is, it's the most beautiful lake in New Zealand in the whole world. This was my wife's great grandmother, Guy Sapphire. And she was a bit like the Kardashians of the time. <laughs> Can you imagine her? She was famous for being around the famous because what she was taking people were to the pink and white terraces. And there was a geyser at the top. And as the water spilt down over a period of 500 years, left the silica behind and created the beautiful baths here. So people not only came over here because they were stunningly beautiful, but in those days they were looking for the cure for arthritis and lumbago and skin diseases. Lumbago is probably not a word we use nowadays, but everybody had a bad back. Okay, so the water coming out of the rocks here yeah. runs at 86 degrees centigrade. Wow. Um, and runs into the lake here, so you have to find the right place to go in without burning your toes. Here you go. Come on. There you go. And just maybe yeah. don't, don't let it go? No, I won't. And if you come down, you turn around now, okay. and you'll come down backwards. There's first of all one long step, and then there's Keep going down, keep going down, you're right, you're right, you're right. And you, there. And then there's two steps below that. So you've got one, and then you can step backwards a little bit. So there's a stall there, that's the way, and put both feet on there. Okay. And if you put your hand on my shoulder, if you want to. Yep. All right, and we step off. Great. Beautiful. Thank you. Great stuff. Okay. Oh, there's one of those birds coming a bit closer. Just one of them, though. Where? It's still really small. I really small. can't see yeah. a thing. I just see water. Just coming across here. Like down there, yeah, currently. Oh, yeah, maybe. The little black dot. Yeah. The little black dot. I That's see the one. little black dot. There's a boat there. Yeah, there is. Yep. See that boat? Yep. I'm just pointing it out for you. Thank you. Don't know what it's called. Don't know what the writing is, but there's Sweet a boat. Sweetwater 3. Yep. No, I, I can't, I don't know, things like that. If I don't have some kind of memory of something, yeah. like grass, well, grass is obviously green. I know grass is green, so obviously I'm gonna look at something that's like, yeah. uh, it's the same with memory of like what you're wearing. Um, yeah. You're wearing blue shorts. I know you're wearing blue shorts. If you suddenly changed, it would take me a wee bit to register that, hang on, you've changed into red shorts or yeah. something like that. Thank you. That's easy, what a mess. No, Lowy. <laughs> Eilish has been pushing herself, which is not out of the ordinary for her. But she does, she gets very stressed and she hits fatigue. A burnout for me is basically just being in so much pain and being so fatigued and tired that I can't get out of bed. I've gone through some really tough patches in the past where that's actually led to depression and and feeling quite unhappy with how things have, have been going. Worry for Eilish would be just her letting things get on top of her because she does take a lot on board and she does feel susceptible to getting stressed. I think Taupo will be different and help with that. Well? Yeah. Yeah, well. September 2015, I was diagnosed 
with SMART syndrome, which stands for stroke-like migraines after radiotherapy. The blood vessels around my tumour have been damaged. I get numbness in my face and tingliness going all down one side of me. Light becomes very painful. My vision goes all blurry and spotty. And the pain is just excruciating to the point where I've actually thought I was going to die. For me, each time she says, God, that headache today, I just can't bear that. And as a part of me thinks, God, here we go again. Is that thing going to get moving again? Mm. And we're in a situation now where if it did, we've run out of ammunition, there's nothing else we can throw at it. And yet it sits dormant for years. But as a parent of a child with cancer, I can tell you that every day is the same. You just wonder. Saying goodbye to my mum was quite difficult. Um, she's quite emotional. She's happy for me, but at the same time, it's the first time I've lived more than two, three hours away from her. Andre was a, a bit of emotional saying goodbye to his mum. I think Pam was, was very emotional saying goodbye to Andre. I think she'll uh, miss him terribly. And he, he does so much for her and supports her so much that I think it will be challenging for, for her in some ways, but I think he'll go up and see her quite often. Are they doing roadworks or something? Yeah. yeah, that road going straight to Taupo from the roundabout was closed. Okay. I was like, okay. As they get older, and Eilish is 21 this year, Andre's 25, he's lived independently, you know, within flats with friends and things. It would be wonderful if Eilish had that opportunity. It just depends on her health and, and you know, we, we never know what's going to happen. Do they have a clash? Yep. Oh, they yes. bicker all the time. They bicker all the time. <laughs> yes, they do. They bicker over things. They'll be cooking a meal, and it's really funny to watch because they will bicker. Um, but I think that comes from the security of having somebody being your friend your whole life. Can we take the harness off to it? I don't think it was there before. Oh, it used to be in the back. Just pop it in the back, yeah. That's where it was before. Oh, it used nice. to be over his nose. Yeah. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was, yeah, it was. It was behind him. I think it was behind him. It was I behind it was him. Behind. Check your camera. No. No, it was Mate, behind no, him. Not now. Mate, you'll see. It uh, was behind him. Okay, children. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just saying, point that. I'm just saying, point. Look at the evidence. I love you guys bickering. This is our everyday lives, and it drives well, me. Usually it turns out I'm right. Ju usually it's not everyday lives. Andre, Andre, if we weren't on camera, you know what I'd be doing right yeah, now? Yeah, well, I think they won. No, no, I'd be doing something else, something oh. quite rude with my with my well, hand, rude. you know, you know. The, the, the yeah, no. Way. 
treat, so... <laughs> Where the belts? Auction hammer. <laughs> oh, that's an eight. Wind chime. Look out. Look out. Yep. Jeez. Thanks. It's all right. Hi there. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm Monica. It's Eilish and Lois. Hello, Eilish. Nice to meet you. And who have you got here? This is Loie. Hello, Loie. Aren't you just gorgeous? Yes, you mm -hmm. are. How can I help you? We're just, um, just moving to Taupo from Auckland and we just wanted to come and have a look around the markets and uh, talk to you about possibly setting up a stall in the future. The things you have to decide is how big your stall is going to be. Mm -hmm. It's a really neat little market. Uh, it's a family, so we help each other, which is really good. We look out for each other if somebody needs to go somewhere, you know. So if you fit in here, you'd really, really love us. Which one do you think she'd like the most? Um, does she like her china? Yeah. You've seen how many teapots yeah, she owns. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, that's pretty cool. So that's 50? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that bird is so cute. Yeah. Time to go home. Go see your mum and dad. Yeah. I feel love when you're around. Pick me up when I'm feeling down. The stars align. You broke the mold. Nothing comes close. When you're around, you lift me up. My God, in light when things get tough. You feel so good. You wear so fine. Take my was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.